Hello. I want everybody to understand the serious argument in my case. And uh, I'm just walking around doing this. The serious argument is that government are guilty of misfeasance in public office. And I'll tell you why. Because they gave my case to a third party who has a history of systemic actions. Uh, they call them mistakes. They call them failures. Um, they call their, their actions uh, oversights. You know, they'll, they'll give it a word that suits their purpose to not have any criminality attached to it. And the history is they run a civil jurisdiction which has a systemic criminality behind it. Abuse, threats, intimidation, harassment, criminal harassment, violence, uh, torment, torture, frustration. These are the same people who are supposed to be restoring people's lives to the best they can be. Then they've got the, the actions of inventing their own injuries and uh, alleging the person suffers this injury, brain injury or mental illness or suffers that, suffers the other. They hide behind everything they can manufacture. And it's for the victim to prove otherwise, not for these terrorists to explain exactly what they're actually trying to achieve, which has nothing to do with rehabilitation. And the government is guilty for giving my life to a third party, knowing their history of criminalities. The police are not overseeing the crimes that are being committed and the abuse and the threats and the intimidation of their victims. Or their actions are, oh, we're, we're looking for fraudsters. It's the, it's the greatest thing in the world. Oh, we're looking for people who are committing fraud. But they're not addressing people's injuries. So what they do is they go out and they, they have this pretense of, if you can actually do one little thing in your day that you shouldn't be able to do it for yourself you should be able to do it in a day's work it's a fucking joke the the term work needs to be properly defined into law because these people obviously can't define it themselves these lawyers are literally trying to manipulate a person who is struggling every day and they want to literally take what they're struggling with and turn it into, oh, you're capable of doing this work or that work or that work. It's a base load of shit. But they're not addressing the person's injuries. They're not giving people medical or treatment needs. They're literally turning people's lives into prisoners, hostages, and captives, holding them criminally to blackmail and ransom at all times, which is misfeasance in public office by the government who laid down a rule that stated ACC cannot contract out of legislation, no matter how many crimes they commit. The victim remains the property of that organization until the day they retire or die. And they're not getting the rights and entitlements and rehabilitation and medical and treatment needs met on any level. It is such a dysfunctional, disorganized, corrupt, criminally run enterprise that's unreal. Doctors do not listen to the patients. They're not looking after the patient's needs. They're doing exactly what they're being told by the lawyers in ACC crime and government. They're assisting these people and they don't care who they sell down the river and who they don't sell down the river. But they're not running rehabilitation. This is where the government is guilty of misfeasance in public office for allowing the attacks on their victims. The victims that the government know are their victims and still doing nothing about it. They're not doing any changes. They're lying through their teeth to the United Nations saying, oh, we, 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 we've got all these forums. You've got no address for the crimes that these people are committing because they're shutting up shop and saying, you pay for it. Another uh, case of criminal blackmail under Section B of the Crimes Act. So literally, they're creating avenues that are creating conflicts, that are creating trauma in victims' lives, uh, torment in victims' lives, and leaving victims even with post-traumatic stress, like they did to me, through all their violence and abuse and putting me on the siege in my own home. It's, a, it's, it's an absolute disgrace. They're locking injured people up in a prison, alleging crimes that never took place. The crimes were actually being committed by these terrorists themselves. And, you know, everybody can sit there and think, oh, he's great entertainment and all the rest of it. I'm not a fucking entertainer here. I'm here to fucking tell you this is my life. And it better be taken out of harm's way. Harm's way means out of the hands of ACC, Crown and Government completely. Then it comes down to a question of compensation, medical and treatment needs. These people are not fitting the bills for what needs to be paid for. 
and the criminals are being paid by taxpayers' money to commit these crimes. There's the other problem. The, the, the entire situation in my case can prove beyond any reasonable doubt that every MP, every minister, every Prime Minister for the last 44 years is guilty of misfeasance in public office for the destruction that they're carrying out on their victims' lives. Now, that is a criminal offence. The government cannot make a law to sell a victim's life to a third party without that third party upholding all its laws, all its legislation, and all the victim's rights, which the victim now, uh, once you're on the ACC, you've got no rights. You don't have any rights. We own you. That's their attitude, because that is the factual nature of this organization. That in itself, that said, the government are guilty of misfeasance in public office for all the harm that has been done to every victim under ACC Crown and Government. The government are also guilty of running a slave trade because they sell their victims' lives to ACC and they're making mountains of profits out of it. Now, what are they doing for the country to achieve the running of ACC? They're allowing businesses to come in and invest and they can never be sued and they can get up to all the dirty low-life practices they like. Now, if they break the law, you have Osh. Osh are a useless load of shite anyway. But they can take a company to court and, and have the company uh, fined. But the government makes the money, not the victim. Or ACC makes the money, not the victim. You see, the victims aren't getting anything. The victims are, are going backward and backward and backward and backward. The government is running organized crime when it's running ACC. It's also running a slave trade. It's also running a kidnapping mechanism. It's, um, they're restricting your entire life once you become injured. Your injuries may restrict you in some form, but these people restrict you in a lot more than just your injuries. And they're causing you more injuries into the peace. And this is what these people need to be held criminally to account for. The Prime Minister and all the ministers for the last 44 years of the running of ACC are guilty of misfeasance in public office and they need to be held criminally answerable and to account for allowing these crimes to be committed against their victims. The abuse, threats, intimidation and violence that people go through, the stalking, the slandering, the labelling, the defaming, the... I don't know, I mean, he said just about every crime you can think of, they commit. And whenever you, if you want to sit down and have a civilized conversation and, and get questions answered, their answer is, we don't have to answer any of your questions. So everything's turned into a legal and a political process. This is also part and parcel of misfeasance in public office. Now, Governments do not get involved in individual cases. Well, can they explain why Ruth Dyson called on the heads of all her departments, including the Ombudsman, and had a secret meeting held at Parliament on the 20th of June 2007, to which I was not made aware of for seven years? So therefore, I couldn't call any of these terrorists even into a court of law because I knew nothing about their actions. Um, my defence lawyer, David Hoskin, he never mentioned the this is an act of war against you, Michael, in any of my court cases. Um, he literally got paid to screw me over. And he benefited from that because he moved up to a nice big law firm. The guy was a useless load of shit before that. Because every lawyer I've ever spoken to said he's the laziest fucking lawyer on the planet. But yet, he was able to improve his career straight after my case. And I'm not the only case that he screwed over. He screwed over a, a, a prisoner that I met in prison. Uh, Jagat Hewitt, he literally, he wasn't pleading guilty to any of the charges, then he got almost killed in prison. And then all of a sudden he's pleading guilty to all these charges because David Hoskin wouldn't do his job. This guy is nothing but a shyster, a lowlife and a piece of shit. This guy should be behind bars himself, David Hoskin. He's a criminal. And he, he worked with the Crown and the government to fuck me over. And uh, he was supposed to apply for an appeal for me signing my medical certificate. And he wouldn't do it. He literally let it run out of time, let it run over time, and then fucked me over. An absolute disgrace. He was instructed to do it many times. And uh, he didn't do it. And then I got screwed down by the, the Court of Appeal. And that cost me a lot of money too. This entire process is built on criminal blackmail, 
the government are guilty of misfeasance in public office for the criminal blackmail that they create for their victims. Done through ACC, which is a slave trade. Nobody wants to discuss this. The media is not discussing this. The Crown is not discussing this. Parliament is not discussing this because they're all guilty of the same crimes and they all should be locked up for at least the rest of their lives for what they do to victims' lives. Right, I hope you all understand that because that's all factual and it's all true.